Hi, I'm Cheryl Morales of the Newport News Tourism Office, and welcome to What's New in Newport News. Did you know that you have some connection to the world's waters? Well, our friends at the Mariners Museum and Park are here to help us explore those connections. To start our show, I have Howard Hagee. He is the president and CEO of the Mariners Museum, and I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, welcome, Cheryl. Well. It's been a while since we've had the opportunity to tape, you know, a show for the Mariners Museum, and I'm really excited to let the audience see what you and your team have actually been continuing to do to make this an outstanding museum. Yeah, thanks. Well, we're really glad to have you, and you're exactly right. There is a ton going on here. There is, yes. Yeah. But before we start, can I know some people might not know you. So, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. So, I was 14 years in the Army, of all things, uh, including a tour in Iraq with the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, and after I got out of the service, I worked on Capitol Hill for a year. Uh, I was an assistant dean at the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy at UVA. Uh, and then started my own strategy and leadership development business before coming to the museum. And I've been at the Mariners Museum for about five years now. How diverse. Well, first of all, thank you for your service yeah. from another military family myself. I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, very diverse. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, so I, don't, I come to the museum with really more of an operational and a little bit of a fundraising background and, and less so a, a museum background. Okay, well, it's um, helping for sure, I That's can it. tell you. Yeah. And that, that ties me into the next question I wanted to ask you, and that is, what is the Mariner's uh, mission? Yeah, so we say that our mission is to connect people to the world's waters, because through the waters, through our shared maritime heritage, we're connected to one another. And we think that's really important today, right? Because we really receive daily reminders of uh, all the ways that we sometimes feel different from one another. Um, yeah. And this mission talks about how we're bound together as a community, right? In a way, this shared connection to the water, in a way that that transcends race, ethnicity, gender, age, socioeconomics, uh, and we just think it's really powerful and compelling. Well, I'll have to ask you then, what is your connection to the world's water? Yeah, I've got to talk about my grandfather. So okay. my grandfather uh, is the person that taught me to fish. He used to take me out on a, a, a fishing boat that he chartered out of Georgia. Um, but you know, he served in, in World War II, he served in the Navy. And I had known that he had served on a couple of different ships, but it wasn't until I got to the museum that I learned that one of those ships, the USS Catamount, was actually built here at Newport News Shipbuilding. <laughs> and a member of our team found the muster roll that showed that my grandfather was actually on the crew that, that here when uh, the ship was commissioned. So 70 years before I and my family got to Newport News, my grandfather was here, uh, and it was the water that brought us both here. What a connection. And I'll tell you, there are connections very, very similar to that, because as you know, we host here in Newport News and at the Mariners Museum a lot of military reunions. And as such, they love to see this museum, no matter where they're staying, but we hope they're staying in Newport News, That's you right. know? But <laughs> they, come, they come here, and uh, it's just such an impressive that you do actually have a gallery just for that, like you said. That's exactly right. And, and one of the things that, that I, I, you know, so our mission, I think, is laudable and it's admirable to think about the ways in which all, people generally are connected to the water. But our collection is so vast and it's, the scope of it is so great um, that we actually do see on a much more regular basis now people coming to the museum and seeing something of their own history in our collection. Well, that's fantastic, and thank you so much for, for starting our show off. I can't wait to talk to your other team members. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Well, up next, we're going to talk to some team members about this incredible Newport News attraction. So don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Well, 
Well, welcome back. With me right now is Sherry Lovett Solomon. She is the Group Experiences Coordinator for the museum. And we actually work together to promote the city and the Mariners Museum and Park to people who plan group tours for the adult and the student market. So it's a pleasure to have Sherry on the, on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to join you today. Well, before we actually start with the exhibits and inside the museum, let's go outside to the beautiful park that you have. Absolutely. The Mariner's Park spans 554 acres. It includes the five mile Nolan Trail. The Mariner's Park is actually one of the largest privately owned and maintained parks in the country. Wow. And it's free and open to the public. It also encompasses the beautiful 164-acre Mariner's Lake, Lions Bridge, which overlooks our beautiful James River as well. One of the new things we have in the park that we're really excited about is a new guided tour, the History of the Park Tour. It is a 90-minute tour led by our newly created park department. It's about a quarter mile, and guests get upfront and personal with nature. They learn about our native species that we have out in the park, and it's a great time. It's only $1 per person, and reservations for that tour can be made on our website. Oh, lovely. And there are so many different species of birds because of the water and inland. It's, uh, it's a beautiful hike as well. It's three and a half miles or is it more? The it's Nolan like, Trail the is Nolan five Trail. miles. Five miles, yes. 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 It's a great afternoon walk. It really is. Um, Absolutely. Well, great. So inside the museum. Um, I know your mission, Howard told us, was yes. to uh, see and celebrate the connections we all have with the world's waters. How Absolutely. can families do that here at the museum? Absolutely. Well, in 1971, Congress designated us as America's National Maritime Museum. So when families walk through the door, they're immediately immersed in maritime history. They can see international small craft from across the world, learn about cultures in maritime history. They look, can learn about innovation and speed across our seas and so much more. One really fun thing that they can do is pick up our Diddy Bag Scavenger Hunt. It guides families and children throughout the museum as they search for answers to the scavenger hunt. They get to um, search our exhibits. They're actually really fun activities. It's not just about filling in a blank. Uh, we take you on some activities. Let's and look inside that. Absolutely. This is new for so, to the museum. And this is the map of the museum and the scavenger hunt looks like this. Fantastic. Now you said ditty bag. Yes. What's a ditty bag? <laughs> a ditty bag, and I'm actually gonna read this. Ditty bags were used by sailors to carry their personal items and necessary tools on board ships. Each sailor's ditty bag had different types of knot work so they could tell them apart. Oh, very interesting. Exactly. Okay, I wonder if the sailors still have something like that. Know, I'm sure they probably exactly. have, you know. I, I bet they do. Yeah, ditty bags. They do. <laughs> I bet they do. And then something else that we ask for families to do yeah. on, our mariner, on our mariner's wall is to draw or write a story or picture that illustrates their connection to the water and then actually post it on the wall. And it's an actual wall. It's not a virtual wall. It's an actual wall. Oh, how fun. Now, um, my artistic skills aren't really there. <laughs> However, I think I have some, a picture in my mind of what I would do. I have to ask you, what's your yes. connection to you the know, world's waters? That is one of my favorite questions. I was born right here in Hampton, Virginia, and my father had me fishing out on the Chesapeake Bay before I even started kindergarten. So I grew up in a family of recreational mariners, and to this day, water is still one of my favorite of God's gifts. Oh, good for you, yes. and that is so special. I, I understand the memory aspect of it, because me too. I grew up in the North Shore of Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, every, every weekend we'd be off to the beach, and yep. those are my memories of the 
ocean, you exactly. know, and uh, exactly. it's, it's great. And you're absolutely right. There is a connection to the waters. There absolutely is. Also new is the observation area that uh, has been developed. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. We are so excited to unveil our new observation area in the Batten Conservation Complex Clean Lab. Say that fast. Right. <laughs> um, but in that area, our guests can actually see our conservationists at work preserving, cleaning, cataloging items from our collection. And they do this because they want to preserve those artifacts for future generations. So it's not necessarily for artifacts from the monitor that you have, the USS Monitor, but for all of your collections that you have. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. But it is located there. It's so, located in the Monitor Center. Yeah, yes. let's, let's talk about that because yes. that's a gallery in and of itself. Yes, it is. In 1987, NOAA, the National Oce Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, say that fast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> entrusted the Mariners Museum as their repository for artif artifacts collected from the Monitor's National Maritime Sanctuary off the coast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. So when those artifacts were brought here, we built a place to house them right. and to share them with the world. Uh, the Monitor Center has the iconic turret from the USS Monitor, as well as personal artifacts. We have a sailor's coat, we have a wedding ring, we have a boot. So it actually humanizes the entire collection. And um, the Monitor Center takes you through the story of the Civil War and the Battle of Hampton Roads that happened in our waters two miles away. So in a beautiful theater um, production, which really gives you, and it, it would have been hard to do, taking it back to 1862, right? Right, But exactly. you, you guys did it so beautifully. Exactly. And, it, and it really does um, tell the story, you know, of, of the Civil War and that battle, I yes, should it say. Does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Good. Yes, it does. Well, we're going to take a break right now and then introduce another team member uh, to talk about the International Craft Center uh, and some other things because there's a lot to talk about here. There is. I'm going to bring you back at the end, though, okay? Wonderful. Great. Look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be right back to talk about more of the Mariners Museum and Park. Well, welcome back to our exclusive show of the Mariners Museum and Park. One of my favorite places here in the park is the International Small Craft Center. So I'm really excited to introduce to you Lauren Fury. She is the Manager of Visitor Engagement and she's going to tell us more about it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, so the International Small Craft Center is an amazing collection of about 50 different boats from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And there are small things like dugout canoes all the way up to Chris Craft collections, you know, the kind of boat that you had to be if you were anybody in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites. Yes. Exactly. Even down to like sunfish sailing boats, mm -hmm. uh, the little sunfish racing boats that I actually raced when I was in Cuba when I was 12, oh. um, which is really cool to see in a collection at the museum. Oh, yeah. And even a metal boat that's made uh, out of lawnmower parts mm -hmm. and uh, to escape from Cuba to come here. And, and actually what I love too about the exhibits is uh, periodically there will be a video about it so that you can yeah. learn more but there's definitely um, signage so that yes. you can see exactly what number two is. Exactly. And, yep. and everything is numbered so they're large numbers so everyone can see them easily yeah. and it's a really nice layout too because it's like a giant horseshoe so you can walk around and see all the different collections that are some of them are recreational boats, some of them are sustenance, some of them, you know, like fishing and things like that. Even an umiak that's a, um, an Alaskan boat oh. uh, with, that's covered in walrus skins. Um, and it's huge. It's really large. So that's really cool to see. Well, is that one of your, the, the largest boat that you have in the collection here in the museum? Well, that's the largest in that space, but it's not the largest in the museum. We actually have the AC-72, which is a catamaran from the America's Cup. It won the race in 2013, and that's in our Speed and Innovation exhibit, and it's actually lifted up 
off the ground, so you're walking underneath the space, and it is massive. That's right, now I remember. And it's really funny because of the fact that when you're seeing it on television, you really think that this boat is a small boat. But you see it up close and in person here at the Mariners Museum, it's incredible. It is huge. Exactly. So tell us about that gallery. Well, that gallery is really interesting because, you know, like, we, like I said, the boat is actually lifted off the ground, but the sail, we have a partial sail um, because the actual sail wouldn't fit in there. Uh, we'd have to have about a 13-story atrium added to the roof. So you realize that, in fact, it's not just bigger than you thought, it's massive. Um, you know, you look on the screen on TV, like you said, and you think, oh, it'll fit in my driveway. Yeah, right. Um, no, <laughs> no, it will not. Um, and so you can walk around and see the, the, the kind of training that the men have to have, well, the uh, sailors have to have. They are all men at this point. Um, but the, it's some pretty intensive training, including things to like the caloric intake that they have to take. If we could all eat like they do, it'd be it'd be like 13,000 calories a day. Um, but it's really an amazing exhibit just to be able to see. There's a uniform on display as well, and kids can actually stand on the netting, which would be underneath the boat where the crew is running across. So you can actually stand on that and see what kind of coordination you have. Me, not so much. <laughs> and when it's almost, it's standing still, not yeah, on the exactly. water to boot, right. you know, right? It's not going 60 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, it is a special exhibit that people de definitely have to check out. Mm -hmm. You know what else is a really special exhibit? It, that is at the very beginning of when this museum first opened up, and that's all the models that you have. You know, and it's the one of the things I love about the model gallery is that you can tell the time period of the model just by looking at a lot of the display cases. So you can see some of the cases were built in the 19th century. They're very Victorian in design. And then you see later kind of like, you know, TV shows from the 1960s kind of cases. And they are separated out by purpose. So there's cruise ships, there's cargo ships, uh, there's just, you know, sailing vessels, all those kinds of things in the model. Uh, gallery itself. Great, yeah. Uh, it, tell these ships then, these models, were models that would eventually become a ship. Is that correct? Right. Well, a lot part? of them, yes. A lot of the larger ones were actually in offices. So it's basically, if you're coming to uh, buy a ship um, for your company, um, I have one on display to show you how amazing and wonderful the ships we build are. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how they got to be, why they're so large. Uh, some of them are absolutely huge. Right. And the crab tree. Oh. Exhibit, I know, right? <laughs> I agree. Fangirl. Oh. Um, the Crabtree exhibit is August Crabtree and his wife Winifred made the models that we have in our collection. And they're all in one location because that was one of the things that he wanted done. He wanted them together. And they, you know, I explained to, to, to folks that they were built before the internet existed. So he's writing letters all over the world to get plans from these native cultures and these these kind of ships that were built, and then he's recreated them. And a lot of the tools that model makers use today didn't exist. So he's using um, women's hair curlers, um, dental tools, right. all kinds of things to build these beautiful models in woods from all over the world as well. I mean, he even went back and like repainted one of them because he didn't like how he had done it back in the original plan for it. So, I mean, which is just amazing. The detail's amazing. And, and wasn't one used actually for a movie? Yes. 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 So mm -hmm. it's got a little, you know, <laughs> credit there too, you know. Exactly. But yeah. I love how you can sit down and see a video yep, about him and his wife. Mm -hmm. Yep. A video about him, and he's telling his story, basically, of mm. how he builds those models. And right. it's just, and they had a, an amazing relationship. They, they never had children. I tell people they had ships. Uh, right, instead. and that, that so, they did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Lauren, I want to thank you so much. It's been so interesting talking with you, and um, I know our audience is thrilled and can't wait to come and visit y'all. I can't wait to have them here. Great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And because there's so many other galleries to explore here at the Mariners Museum, I'm going to bring Sherry back, and we're going to talk about a typical day here at the Mariners Museum and Park. So don't go away. We'll be right back.
leave me alone. Well, welcome back, Sherry. Thank you. It's nice to be back. We do have a lot here. It definitely is a full day. So tell us what a typical day would look like when we bring our families here. Absolutely. A family can get immersed at the Mariner's Museum. Join us in the morning, come and explore the galleries, pick up that uh, scavenger hunt that I mentioned earlier. That will guide you through with fun activities. Then take a break for lunch and have lunch at our Mariner's Cafe right on site. You can eat there or outside on our patio. And then you can walk off that dessert on the Nolan Trail, as I mentioned. There you go. Five miles all the way around, beautiful scenery. Uh, join us outside on our History of the Park tour. Then come back in, finish exploring the galleries. Of course, I believe, and I think when my children were little, they believed that no visit to any museum was complete without a visit to the museum gift shop. This is no <laughs> exception. Spend some time in our gift shop. And the ditty bags we mentioned earlier, they're actually available for purchase oh, in, cute. exactly, in the gift shop. Okay. Actually, too, I have to interject. Yes. Um, I go to your gift shop year round. Perfect. For anniversary gifts, birthday gifts, Christmas, you know, it is a beautiful, extensive, you know, uh, museum gift shop. It is. And uh, they it have is. kids' games and puzzles and the whole, yeah. So it's, it's not just while you're here. Come back and even just go to the gift shop if exactly. you want to. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So if group tours are your thing, join us for a group tour led by one of our expert docents. They'll guide you through the museum and give you commentary that you would not get otherwise. Great experience. Or join us outside for the History of the Park Tour led by one of our park experts. Host a wedding. Host a military retirement or re-enlistment. Become a museum member. Enjoy all of the perks of membership that include a lot of um, seminars that you do exactly. um, that are themed so that if you are interested in Civil War or if you're interested in waterways, you know, um, I've attended a couple myself. Uh, John Corsine is incredible. He is. He really is. He is. So here's to Henry Worthington. Here, here, here. Museum members have priority access to special events, free general admission, members only programming, and more. So we invite guests who want to engage on that level to become members. Also, take advantage of one of our many volunteer opportunities, um, all listed on our website. Well, you know, it's no wonder Congress designated you as America's Maritime Museum. Seriously, there was just so much. Um, what is the admission? Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the things we're most proud of. Our general admission is only $1 per person, which makes a family visit to the Mariner's Museum one of the most budget-friendly experiences we can have in our great city. Advanced tickets may be purchased online or they may be purchased at our admissions desk. Fantastic. That's, that's just um, mind-blowing. Absolutely. It really is, <laughs> because this is such an ex ex extensive museum for a dollar. Exactly. Well, exactly. I'm so glad it's in Newport News. Thank Me too. You. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So yes, I do have to take the opportunity to thank our generous donors uh, who support our museum to help us keep that admission at one dollar per person. There you go. Absolutely. So Sherry, if somebody wanted to get more information about your hours, you know, that you're open and um, some more about the galleries that maybe we didn't have a chance to talk about because there's so much, uh, where, where can they get that information? Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, uh, visit our website, www.marinersmuseum.org, for all the information you need to plan your perfect day at the Mariners Museum. Do you also have a Facebook page? Yes, absolutely. Great. So Please. people out in your, the park or while well, they're in here, you know, taking some pictures, they can yes. post it on your Facebook. Absolutely. We are on social media on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for being with us today and your team, you know, members as well as we explored your museum. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. It was our pleasure. Thank you for having us today. And we look forward to welcoming our guests to the Mariners Museum and Park. And I want to thank you for watching. As always, you can go to our website for more information about this incredible museum and all the great things that are happening in Newport News. That's newport-news.org. You can also go on our Facebook page or our other social media platforms to find out more information and contests that we do. 
So again, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.